And I do just have one final question. I'd love both of your thoughts on this. And I'm going to state it, um, well, a little bit crassly uh, and, and simply, but so what? So what? I mean, uh, so let's say that, um, you know, through the course of this video, I have been sort of led to believe, hey, this, this might have happened, or I'm thinking about the resurrection differently. So, so what? What does, what does this matter? Um, and this really leads back to, to what I was saying. I have a conviction uh, that we can't leave this alone, and none of us should leave this question alone, that we have to answer Jesus's question that he posed to his disciples of, who do you say that I am? And then we have to deal with what we think about whether or not he really died and really rose again. And so help us kind of walk through that a little bit. Uh, uh, so what? What are the practical implications of whether or not Jesus rose from the dead upon my life today? And, and we'll, Dr. Butner, we'll, we'll start with you. Sure. I think in our internet generation, we are bombarded by interesting facts and details and crazy stories all the time. So we might be inclined to just say, oh, cool. Jesus rose from the dead. Another interesting story in detail to put back in my file cabinet to share with my friends at some point. But I think this story is different from any other interesting story you might hear because of what the resurrection signifies. The fact that God rose Christ from the dead confirms Jesus's identity and it confirms his message. So God doesn't just raise criminals from the dead and villains from the dead. Um, he doesn't raise evil people from the dead because he is God and he is good. Um, at the end, the final resurrection, he will raise them unto judgment, the Bible teaches, but he doesn't just raise them in the course of history, leading entire groups of people to think they're the Messiah. So this tells us that when God raised Jesus from the dead, he was vindicating him. He was showing that Jesus is the Messiah and that Jesus' message, which is that he had to give his life as a ransom for many, must be true. Which means the resurrection is confirmation of the gospel. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and you don't believe that he had to die for you, then that changes your eternal fate. You will no longer share in the resurrection that he has in the same way unto a relationship of communion and fellowship with God. So it's a very important piece of information. If Jesus died, we're saved, uh, only if he was also raised. If he wasn't raised, as Paul says, it's nothing. Yeah, and Tim, how about you on that same question? So what? Yeah, so I think uh, if, the, if the Christian claim, the fundamental Christian claim throughout all of Christianity's history is that Jesus' death and resurrection are the center of human history, I think that makes an immense difference in terms of how we look at our lives. If you think about your grandparents, your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents, um, most of us, obviously we know for the most part, we know our parents, we might know our grandparents. Um, some of us know our great grandparents, but you go back to great, great grandparents or further and almost no, none of us can say something definitive and meaningful about them. And when you think about that in our own life, that means that you wait for five generations and all of us are forgotten. And what really ends us is death. Death ends the equation. Um, we can try to make meaningful contributions in uh, academics or sports or the arts or whatever it would be. We try to last a legacy. But the truth is the vast majority of, of us die, we are forgotten, and the world moves on. And that would be the end of the story if the resurrection is not true. In the end, everything is forgotten. You wait long enough, Alexander the Great will be forgotten. You wait long enough and this world itself will become nothing and everything just ends in a cold, silent death as the universe ever expands. And that's the story. That's the grand story if, say, there is no God. But if Christianity is true and the resurrection is true, then instead all of our deaths, um, as long as they're submitted to God properly, is really just a step unto life. And I think that makes a difference in terms of how we look at self-sacrifice and how we look at others and how we look at um, the meaning of life, that life doesn't 
you know, have meaning seeped out of it and just taken away from it. But instead, life is charged with meaning at every moment because there is hope beyond the grave. And because what we do now has an impact. And I don't know exactly how it has an impact. Um, just as Jesus, Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, still bore the scars of the cross, maybe in certain ways, what we do now will actually carry on to the physical eternity that we have. I don't know for sure. But what I do know is in the most important chapter in the New Testament on the resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, which I mentioned earlier, Paul gives this long defense of why the resurrection must have happened and what its meaning is. And he ends by saying this. This is his final word about the resurrection in verse 58 of chapter 15. He says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord, in Jesus, is not in vain. And so I just, to me, the importance of the resurrection is that charges with utter, profound, and immortal meaning what we do in our everyday lives. And that's, that's to me, that's the big question. Is, is the end of my life, is the end of human history just meaningless and everything is forgotten and death wins or is it in the end fundamentally and, and impassionately meaningful and death always ends instead in life for those who are trusting in christ jesus as their savior mm. Mm. yeah no i i couldn't agree more with both of you and when i think about that question of of so what um it makes me reflect upon what i've tried to do all year in chapel and in my work um with our community with our students is really a uh, make plain um and i i haven't uh, you know, hidden this for a moment that I find Jesus and his ways uh, simply irresistible and, and beautiful and frankly better um, than any other way of life. And, um, you know, that's true for me. Um, and I've tried to, to make that, put that on display uh, and hopefully present that in a, in a compelling manner. Um, and, and the resurrection uh, is, is the event, the resurrection of Jesus is the event that confirms why it is that Jesus and his ways are most beautiful, most compelling, and I think best. Um, a spoken word artist by the name of Propaganda has a, uh, a, a message, a video on the gospel, and one of the lines in it uh, captivated me when I first heard it, gripped my heart, and it hasn't let go. He says that with his life on the cross, with his death on the cross, uh, Jesus wrote a check. On the cross, Jesus wrote a check with his life, but at the resurrection, we all cheered because it means that the check cleared, right? That the check didn't bounce. Uh, Jesus wrote a check with his life and it, it didn't bounce. He was good for it by coming back uh, to life, by rising again. And, and it confirms, um, like uh, Glenn said, his, his identity. It confirms his message. It, it gives us everyday meaning, uh, like Tim said. And, uh, and it really is the reason why I have submitted myself and my life uh, to, to Jesus, to his way, to his teachings, um, to how he lived life, by, to how he loved loved others and gave himself away. And it's because we see in, the, in his resurrection something so beautiful and so astounding. And I think something that makes a lot of sense, as we've been talking about uh, over the last few minutes, um, that it's what I've chosen and what these guys that are with me have chosen to give our lives to. And and we hope that uh, you are the same. Um, if you are watching this and you're a follower of Jesus, we hope this has encouraged you uh, to continue on the path that you're already walking. Uh, but we know that many uh, of our students uh, do not follow Jesus. And so if you're, if you're watching this and, and you um, are not a follower of Jesus, thank you for tuning in and sticking with us uh, the whole time. We're really grateful that you did that. Wherever you're at, follower of Jesus or not, we want to provide you with a next step. And so uh, in the email that you received, this video in. I, I sent a link uh, to this uh, email. Uh, there is a link for you to uh, click and say, hey, I want to take a next step. And maybe that's surrendering your life to Jesus. Maybe that is uh, just doubling down on believing in the resurrection uh, and its power to transform your everyday life. But we want to provide you with a next step. Uh, we think that that's really important. And so uh, go back to that email and click the next step link. And uh, and thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close our time in prayer. Um, and uh, I'll ask these guys to join me. And if you're watching, uh, join me in prayer, thanking uh, God uh, that he raised Jesus from the dead. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you um, that you did raise Jesus from the dead. Um, we believe that. 
and we know that that is a it's a it's a it's a faith claim, Lord. It's something that uh, that we have to take a step of faith to believe. Um, but we we believe it happened, and we believe it makes great sense of everything that came after it, and makes sense of of so much else, Lord. And um, we also believe it's incredibly beautiful and incredibly gracious. And so we're really grateful for it, Lord. I pray for all those that are watching this video, um, no matter who they are, no matter where they're coming from, no matter what their story is, Lord, I believe that you love them desperately and that you desire them um, to be uh, in your family. And the way into your family is to trust in uh, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so prompt them towards that, Lord, help them to take that next, next step, uh, stir up their hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit um, to do that, Lord. Um, we're so grateful for Holy Week. Uh, we're gathering differently. We're worshiping differently in the midst of this uh, global pandemic, um, but Holy Week remains the same. And so we uh, take special uh, care this week to pause and remember uh, the central truth of the Christian uh, faith that after uh, Jesus was dead and buried, three days later, he rose again. We pray all of this in his risen name. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. You can go ahead and say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks so much for watching.